What's up everyone, it's your boy NornRad89 here bringing you another video continuing the Nightmare on Elm Street review series. We are finally now on to the final film in the franchise right now as it stands currently. Today we're going to be talking about the 2010 Nightmare on Elm Street remake. This is a very divisive film because there are some horror fans I've noticed in the community that have grown to like this film. This is a film that is slowly growing a cult following, but there are some still hardcore fans that really don't even like this film or consider this film even like canon to be honest or like you know with the other ones they just don't acknowledge it to be honest but today you're going to hear my feelings on this film the positives the negatives the rating and then i'm going to send you all home so let's do this roll it So Nightmare on Elm Street, the remake, yes, the 2010 remake, like I said, a very divisive film. Let's kind of get into positives right away before we start slamming this film or talking crap about this film, because there, to be honest, there are a lot of huge negatives with this film, but there are some bright spots. There are some positives in this film. Once for, like, to be honest, let's just kick it off right off the bat is that this has probably the most recognizable cast out of any Nightmare on Elm Street film. You know, we have Katie Cassidy in here, Kyle Garner, we have Jackie Earl Haley, Clancy Brown, Connie Brighton, Rooney Mara. There is a cast of plenty in this film. Do they all do their job and bring it home? I'm looking at you, Rooney. No, they don't. But like I said, there is a really good cast. Like I said, the most notable, recognizable cast out of any Nightmare on Elm Street film easy. Another thing I enjoy about this film is the cinematography and the look of this film. This film actually has some great colors. Like, look at some of these shots. There's some really good cinematography, great color choices. It's bright. It, like I said, it's very out there in terms of the style and the aesthetic they were going for. But yeah, that's just kind of something that kind of is there to brighten the eyes, you know, make you look at the shine. You know, there's definitely some other lackluster stuff in this film we'll get to and stuff. But yeah, definitely cinematography, colors, all that stuff is off the chart to go along with that we have Steve Jablonski doing the music for this film and I actually think the music is you know it obviously has a callback and is much very similar to that original Nightmare on Elm Street theme but there are some different cues and some different moments and I think it's very it's updated for a modern audience and I enjoyed the score of this film. Another thing is Jackie Earl Haley's performance. I don't think his performance is that bad. Did I recognize and realize that once I saw this film, this was going to be a one-off? Definitely. I knew for a fact that once we saw this film that we weren't going to get any other movies or sequels to this movie. So that is one thing that hurts it. But Jackie Earl Haley's performance, like I said, I don't think he did that bad in terms of the character, Robert, like or the Freddy Krueger character. And even when he's non-threatening, when he's just being like the gardener and you see him chilling with the kids and playing hide-and-seek, and stuff like that. I think for all aspects of this film, I think he did, he brought it. He did what he was asked to do. Was it really what we wanted? Maybe not. And another good thing about this film or a positive is I respect the risk that they take in this film. There are some franchises and some movies that do things that I think are egregious, that I can't stand, that I hate. But for Nightmare on Elm Street, like I actually respected the risk that they tried to go with with a plot device or a certain plot line in this film, but they don't commit. They don't hammer it home. And like I said, that's one thing for me is if you were going to bring up that plot line and you were going to kind of make it a bait and switch, don't do that. I would have much rather them just, you know, commit it all the way to that plot point. But I do kind of, like I said, respect the risk taking that they went for story wise. Now let's get into the mixed and negatives because like I said, this is a film that has a ton of flaws inside of it. One huge flaw, I think watching it, rewatching it this time, I think this is like the 11th time this is like the 10th or 11th time i've watched this film and really you can feel the weight of katie cassidy's character chris when she's gone you can totally feel the weight of that so i think she was a much better a lead actress and a much better protagonist for the film so basically the first like 25 minutes of the movie i'm highly invested and i'm highly involved with this character and then they dispatch her and it's like you feel like the weight of her getting killed because you don't want her to die but it hurts the film greatly because the like Rooney Mara does not carry this film that leads into another negative is like why cast Rooney Mara to be Nancy for real like they should have just flip flopped that they should have just let Katie Cassidy be Nancy because because her, what she brought to the role was much more prominent. And like you can see the character and the acting. And when Rooney Mara, it just really feels like she kind of walked into this role and just kind of sleepwalked through it, no pun intended. Even when you get to the latter half of the film in the third act, you can greatly see how Kyle Garner.
Wagner. He commands every scene. He chews up the scenery, and Rooney Mara is like, does not bring it home. Like I said, it's clearly like, you know, Katie Cassidy and Kyle Garner are the two actors that really carry this film in terms of the first act and then the second and third act kind of, you know, plot stuff. All of them carry this film, so going for her for the lead, I think, was a huge mistake. Another negative with this film is there are some bad CGI moments and some bad moments where they try to homage and do things from the original Nightmare on Elm Street and relive those moments, and it just it's just half-hearted. It's half-assed, and you can tell, and I don't like that, like, for real. When it's more, if you go more practical, we would have been so much happier because the CGI stuff in here, even for 2010, it looks pretty dated. And another thing is, like I said, with the plot line and the storyline, I was fine with them going for the whole risk of taking like, oh, maybe Freddy Krueger was innocent and then the parents just killed him and like we were lying, you know, kind of thing. I really didn't care about that. I know there's a lot of fans, hardcore fans, and I'm a hardcore Nightmare on Elm Street fan. Freddy Krueger's a, a hardcore asshole. He is a horrible person. But I knew for a fact when I went to see this film in the theaters, just as it was playing out, I knew... Pretty much, we were never going to get a sequel or we were never going to continue off of this film. So I was comfortable with them taking that risk with the characters and doing that with Freddy Krueger. So in the end, you're kind of left with a film that leaves you with a lot more to be desired because, you know, they go for all these risky concepts. There's this creative cinematography and some really solid acting within the film. But then there's all this other stuff that just kind of takes away from a lot of the positives and everything. Is this a film I still enjoy? Yes, this is a film that I still enjoy. And I think online and in the community, it typically gets a lot more hate than it's deserved. Like this isn't really that bad of a remake. Is it one of the top tier remakes like Gold Standard? No, of course not. This isn't a Gold Standard remake at all. But is it the bottom of the barrel garbage? No, it is not that bad. So now let's nail down a rad rating for this bad boy and a Nightmare on Elm Street. The remake is going to get a 6.5 out of 10. Like I said, this is a film that is above average because we have some standout actors. I really like Kyle Gardner's character as Quentin. Chris, you know, uh, she's a great character in this film. Jackie Earl Haley brings the performance and really does everything he can to stand out in this film. But like I said, there's just so many other negatives that are just kind of weighing this film down from being a very, you know, at least decent sequel or a very good sequel. Like I said, in me, this is one that I do return to and I, I have fun returning to it. This isn't a film that I'd be like, oh, like I would never watch this again if they're like, oh, let's watch the Nightmare on Elm Street remake. I'm not one of those kind of people. This is a franchise that, to be honest, after rewatching all these films and we just reviewed them and we talked about every single Nightmare on Elm Street film, Freddy's Dead is really the only one that I don't have fun with that. I'm like, you could erase that one. You can get rid of it from the franchise and I would be totally comfortable. But all the other ones I still have fun with and enjoy. But these are just my thoughts and my opinions on A Nightmare on Elm Street, the remake. That means I would love from, to hear from all of you down below in the comment section. Please share your thoughts. Like the video. That definitely helps out the channel. Subscribe if you're new to the channel and have that notification bell poked so you're notified anytime I post a video because now that we're done reviewing all these Nightmare on Elm Street films you know what's up next we have to rank all the films and I'm also going to be having more Courage the Cowardly Dog videos and deep dives going on and I got some other videos planned in the pipeline I have a Pride video month I really need to get that video out before Pride month is over of some recommendations you know for some Pride movie horror films so be excited and stay tuned to the channel but you all know most importantly what's up have a safe and happy day Peace out.